Hello everyone. I am Kamal Narayan, CEO of Integrated Health and Wellbeing Council, a not-for-profit social impact initiative to promote health for all. The one thing that the ongoing pandemic has taught us so well is that a basic hygiene practice of hand washing has so profound impact on our health that at times it is beyond our imagination. The simple practice of hand washing with soap and water regularly and especially after using toilets or before eating has the potential of reducing over half of the childhood deaths under the age of five that are caused due to pneumonia and diarrhea in this world. In 2018, 5.3 million children died around the world before seeing their first, their fifth birthday. But what is also notable that the world could also save millions of such lives by ensuring good hand washing practices. Washing hand is also proved to be the most effective and powerful shield for the humanity against the COVID-19 pandemic, which is ravaging lives and livelihoods globally. This has become evident that when people maintain good hand hygiene, it can help them more than medications, vaccines, and many other medical interventions at times. But while we are diligently washing our hands and using sanitizers every now and then, we often ignore greater harbors of diseases, disease-causing bacteria and viruses on our fingertips and that are nails and spaces underneath them. Researchers have found that our one single nail hosts more bacteria than the entire hand. But what is more worrisome is that most of us, you know, these shiny cappings get more leniency from us when it comes to maintaining their hygiene and cleanliness. Lack of proper hand and particularly nail sanitation can lead to several healthcare issues and make you visit doctors more often and can even lead to hospitalization in certain cases. During the last six months of COVID-19 spread in India and preventive lockdowns and unlock phases, we at ISW Council has been bringing to you authentic health guidance and home healthcare advices from India's top and most admired healthcare experts. Today, we are bringing a movement to make people aware of safe hands and nail hygiene practices, which will help all of us maintain good health and prevent diseases and life-threatening infections, including that of COVID-19. To help us understand about the health threats that we can face if these basic hygiene practices are ignored and what is the best way to maintain good hand and nail hygiene. We have with us today veteran health experts from various specialties and nail and hand hygiene ambassadors. Let me introduce our esteemed panelists for today's special live show on importance of nail and hand hygiene during the COVID-19. So let me welcome Mr. Rajesh U. Pandya, Managing Director of Kai India. Mr. Rajesh joined Kai Group to lead the business in India. Kai brings over 800 year old Japanese legacy of offering highly precision beauty and personal care products to the Indian consumers and adding great value to their daily life. This program is also supported by Kai as part of its uh, public awareness initiatives. And we thank Kai for helping us put together this information for the public. We have Dr. Major Manish Manan, Head of Department Pediatrics and Neonatology in Paris Hospitals, Gurgram. Uh, Major Manish Manan is a postgraduate in pediatrics from the Army's Referral and Research uh, Hospital, New Delhi. He comes with an extensive experience of 20 years and has served the Army Medical Corps for five years and have 
has also worked in the premier aims uh, in new delhi uh, we also have dr silpa ghosh with us she is the director uh, of department of obstetrics and gynecology uh, in akash hospital uh, dr silpa is well known gynecologist obstetrician and laparoscopic surgeon who brings with her a vast experience of 23 years and has worked with different reputed hospitals including venkateswara fortis and intraprastha polo we also have with us dr bela sharma additional director of internal medicine from fortis memorial research institute gurgaon dr bela has served in the indian air force as graded specialist medicine for 5 years she has been associated with the fortis group since 2002 and currently is heading the department of preventive health care health for you in fmri gurgaon uh with all we also have dr indu balani uh an mbbs and md in dermatology at balani skill and aesthetic center dr balani is a dermatologist with 15 years of experience and also is a custom consultant with bl kapoor memorial hospital so thank you so much all our esteemed panelists today but before i begin our conversation i would request our online viewers to keep sending their questions on the comment box and we will try to answer most of them towards the end of this discussion uh, also like and comment with your feedback and do share this special so on your wall to help many others who may get benefited from this information so thank you everyone and uh, let me begin today's discussion uh, by uh, you know asking uh, mr rajesh pandya uh, about his experience that how he saw india sustainably managing covid 19 and i am asking this especially from the perspective of uh, he is heading a company with a legacy from japan and we have seen that lot of public uh, health hygiene practices uh, you know uh, followed in uh, countries like japan has helped them do really better and prevent a lot of uh, you know losses of life in uh, you know during the uh, present covid 19 and also uh, you know pre prevent the further spread of the disease so how uh, have you seen mr rajesh uh, you know india uh, doing in terms of maintaining uh, these kind of or adapting these uh, health hygiene practices faster which helped us uh, you know kind of uh, prevent further spread of the ongoing pandemic and also how it can be further improved by uh, paying little bit more attention on ignored areas like nails when you talk about hand hygiene mr uh, mr pandya hello good afternoon everybody yeah good uh, india has done really good in uh, comparison of uh, other countries the best defense against any outbreak is a strong healthcare system and covid-19 has uh, revealed how fragile are the health system of uh, countries across the globe india has definitely proved itself as a forerunner in preparing itself for the pandemic of course the government's initiative of uh, arogya setu app is very important uh just recently our prime minister announced that there will be a telemedicine this program will also help us to make our health care better so uh covid 19 is a i would say it's a uh it's not a crisis but it's a challenging opportunity it is giving us chance to see what we have done in the past and what we should do in the future so far india is concerned uh 
we are one of the largest manufacturers of nail clippers we have uh, almost 60 types of nail clippers and as you know japan is one of the best when it comes to the technology and research uh, the nail clippers research has been done by our group it's so intensive and in depth that from a zero year old child to 100 year old person can use our nail clippers and keep themselves trimmed now when i'm using the word trim it's not just mere cutting we are not a country of uh, knife and fork and chopsticks we eat our food by hands so it's very important for us to keep our nails clean let me give you an example that in the past when we used to go to the wide wide enough i am sure you know what i'm talking about wide enough and he would say inke nakhun mein bhi bimari nahi hai nakhun mein bimari na hona tandurusti ki nishani thi now this is something very important and unfortunately nail clippers is a category which has been neglected nobody has addressed nail clipper the way japan has addressed and after living in japan for last 30 years still my family is in tokyo i would say that the same concept of keeping your nail clean we should bring to india and that are these are our efforts because if i ask someone that would you like to share your towel with your loved ones you would say no if i ask someone that would you like to share your toothbrush you will say no then why nail clippers this is something very important for me of course covid 19 is a awakening call for the hygiene washing hands keeping distance social distance but once covid 19 is gone or we have the medicine for covid-19 should we forget to wash our hands should we forget to clean our trim our nails no the answer is totally no because these are the fundamental things which we are forgetting most of the work we do by hands and while eating we use our right hand so our nails are supposed to be unhealthy or with some kind of bacteria in it we need to clean it up and how can we clean it up by keeping it trimmed and maintain it so this is the thing which i would like to request my fellow Indians, of course, learned doctors are sitting on the panel. Uh, I would like to know their views also. But it is very, very important that a small thing can change your concept drastically, dramatically. And this is what my message is for all. My fellow thank, Indians. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Pandya. Uh, before I go to uh, you know specialist doctors, we have 
you know, a gynecologist, we have a pediatrician, and we also have a dermatologist. But let, let me go to somebody who takes care of the whole body. And, uh, you know, Dr. Bela Sarma, she is the doctor for internal medicine. Uh, Dr. Bela Sarma, we are talking about a pandemic of this scale, which is, you know, kind of uh, has uh, brought the whole world to the standstill. And then we are talking about something so basic or like, you know, washing your hands. Uh, WHO since the very beginning and you know on every press conference or every message is every day is being talked about that wash your hands wash your hands and give those 20 seconds to you know while you are washing your hands uh, Mr. Pandya is talking about nail clippers now it seems yeah. to you know uh, uh, maybe apparently disconnected things because I haven't given any damn yeah. attention to the nail clippers so far and uh, uh, you know it is coming of a very uh, 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 surprising, you know, a statement or a fact that uh, we should not exchange our uh, or share our nail clippers. Uh, I think in my family, we have only one nail clippers, which is being used by maybe 10 people. Uh, what it is, you know, so uh, grave about it and what are the health issues you really feel uh, in these, you know, the small cavities in our nails or not keeping, uh, you know, proper hand hygiene, what kind of health uh, threats uh, we are staring at and you know well, what what all can happen if we don't maintain this hygiene all right uh, thank you mr kamal uh, am i audible yeah yeah please okay all yeah. right all right so uh, uh, before we get on to the hand and nail hygiene uh, there are a couple of things i would like to uh, just discuss one is that uh, every pandemic so far has taught us something uh, be it the cholera, be it Spanish influenza, be it plague or anything. You know, they they brought about changes uh, in the whole society. There were change, political changes. There seems to be some internet problem. Uh, Dr. Bela? Uh, it seems we, uh, I think, lost the connection with Dr. Bela. Uh, let let me in between go to Dr. Silpa Ghosh. Uh, Dr. Silpa, uh, Hi, good, you know, afternoon. A, good afternoon. Yeah, you are a you are a gynecologist, uh, but you are a doctor first, and you do know that what all uh, you know health issues can be uh, triggered because of uh, not. Uh, good hand or uh, nail hygiene. And as I ask this question to Dr. Bela also, uh, you know, this pandemic, we, uh, you know, one of the biggest thing uh, to prevent the spread, we have proper hand washing. Uh, and when it comes to hand washing, uh, Mr. Pandya is to be bringing out a very important information about giving much more attention to the nails and, you know, uh, some, some very important precautions which we need to take what what is your take on this and what kind of diseases can happen uh, including you know uh, for the the women and also during you know the period you know uh, 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 phases like pregnancy or maybe for infants yeah absolutely so dr bela was right that each pandemic teaches us something and mr pandya has rightly said that nails are an important part of our hand which we forget so many times so uh, this pandemic has taught us and we doctors already knew the importance of hand hygiene. We used to clean our hands before touching any patient. You know, there were different regimens. You have to use a soap and water or a hand sanitizer to clean your hands for 20 seconds and cover all the areas. In 20 seconds, you're supposed to clean the palms, the back of the fingers, and you're supposed to clean your thumb and you're supposed to clean your wrist. And what about the nails? So any surgeon knows that before uh, washing for a surgery, they do use a nail brush, which is there in the operation theater, because we know a lot of uh, viruses and bacteria and fungi stay on the undersurface of the nail. So nail hygiene is a very important part of personal grooming, not only for doctors, but for all our patients. And here, because I'm a gynecologist, let me tell you all the pregnant ladies which walk into my OPD, the first thing I tell them is please clip your nails because they harbor a lot of infection, not only COVID-19, all sorts of infections. And though they are reluctant, um, I mean, the nails are supposed to be, you know, a part of uh, beauty grooming and all, but uh, the importance of clipping them 
the right amount, like it should be one to two millimeter just above the nail bed, uh, not too short. Uh, it, they should because that would again uh, disturb the whole balance there. So it's very important to have a nail hygiene because a lot of bacteria stay there, a lot of viruses stay there. And this uh, pregnant lady, once she delivers, has to take care not only of herself, she has to take care of the newborn. So not only her nails are important and she has to keep them clipped with a individual clipper, the newborn baby's nails are also so important. And these days we have separate clippers for the babies, newborn babies, because you can't use an adult clipper for a baby. I mean, their nails are so soft and small. So uh, they have separate scissors or nail clippers, which we should use it for them. Otherwise, the infection would be transmitted from one nail clipper to the other, from mother to the baby. So hands and nails, they are very both important to uh, for overall health of the person. Otherwise, uh, diarrhea and loose motions and a lot of infections can uh, spread through the hand and the nails. So hand hygiene and nail hygiene are very important. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Silpa. You know, bringing an important point. Uh, since you talked about that, the beauty aspect also of uh, nails, you know, I would go to uh, Dr. Indu Balani. Uh, you know, I'm sure she is seeing a lot of, uh, you know, clients and patients coming to her. Uh, uh, and she's also providing uh, some medical aesthetic services. Uh, now, Dr. Balani, when people walk in your clinic, uh, especially women, and uh, as Dr. Silpa says that uh, keeping nails of a certain size is very, very important uh, and very you know, critical for maintaining your uh, you know, health and also prevent diseases. Uh, what kind of uh, advice you give to your uh, uh, you know, uh, patients and clients when they walk in and they, they may not be uh, very keen to actually clip all the nails, uh, which may, you know, kind of uh, 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 may not be that uh, a great add-on to their uh, cosmetic uh, appearance. Yeah. So, hello. Uh, I do get a lot of uh, beauty clients, as you rightly said, and uh, they are as concerned about their nails as about their face. So they do go in for regular manicures and uh, they keep their they tend to keep their nails also longer. But uh, I usually advise them that uh, keeping them a bit trimmed, the, uh, like short nails at least. And if they are going to parlors for the manicures and all, they have to really be particular about the uh, instruments being used because that is a place where infections can be transferred due to the uh, use of the whatever manicure instruments they are using over there. Plus, uh, uh, they have to take care of the cuticles as well because it is uh, very commonly with, during manicures and all the cuticles are uh, being pushed backwards. So that again, so uh, is very, very important to protect the nail. The cuticle has been given to us as a protective covering to, uh, so that it uh, doesn't let infections creep in below the skin also at the proximal end. So this end of the nail, you have to be very uh, particular that uh, the cuticle does not get too pushed backwards and you have to keep it moisturized. And plus moisturization, cleaning the nails is very, very important. So when we are washing our hands, I do advise them, those who tend to have a, a longer nails, although I, I am strongly against that, I do tell them to keep them short. But if they are keeping it longer, a bit longer, they have to keep cleaning it regularly and keep moisturizing it as well. Plus take care of the cuticle. And in case they do get infections and all like, uh, discoloration of the nails, they have to get it checked. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lani. And uh, mm. good to hear that you are strongly advising your uh, patients that to keep the uh, nail short. We will come back to you with uh, other you know, aspects also that if they are not keeping their nail shorts and uh, also not that hygiene meant what can be the dermatological uh, outcomes on that. But uh, I think Dr. Bela has uh, come back. So uh, let me, so Dr. Bela, you, uh, so you, you have heard my question uh, and I, I would request you can continue with that because uh, we would like to understand that as a internal medicine expert, what all uh, health problems you see if, uh, you know, hand and nail hygiene is not maintained. Dr. Bela. 
Uh, you are on mute. Yes, ma'am. Am I, yeah. am I audible now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So like, uh, in fact, uh, I was just talking about the pandemic. I was talking about COVID-19 will go down in history as the pandemic, which introduced uh, hand hygiene in a very big way. Uh, we in India are, uh, as a nation, taught to wash our hands, clean our hands. I remember school, uh, there used to be an exercise where teacher would inspect each and child's uh, hands and nails uh, to see if they are clean. So that kind of thing is kind of, uh, you know, it, it's been taught to us right from the childhood. Uh, probably that is why the spread in our country uh, has been, uh, I would say, limited as compared to the rest of the world, if you look at the total population. So that is one aspect. Second, I'll talk about from the internal medicine point of view. Now, uh, as we all know, uh, if we look at the skin as an organ, it is the largest organ in the body. All right. And nails are an extension of the skin. So uh, as internal medicine uh, doctor, uh, we are taught to first look at the nails when we examine a patient. Nails are very important. They tell us about the overall health of a person, whether the nails are uh, 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 small and pink in color, whether they are pale, whether they are bluish discoloration, whether they are, you know, smooth or they have small pits in them or uh, if a person has been biting nails. So all those things we can see from the uh, nails. Now, as far as uh, diseases are concerned, of course, any condition where uh, transmission of infection is happening from food or water or direct contact also, nails become very, very important. Uh, I could actually go on forever, but uh, even conditions like dengue, where bleeding tendencies are there. So I always look at the patient's nails and I tell them, please clip your nails, otherwise you will end up scratching yourself and bleeding very heavily. Uh, in food, people who are handling food, like cooks and bearers and all. Again, when we do their medical examination, nails are one of the most important examination because I always look at the nails. I see the length of the nails. And if there is anything underneath the uh, nail surface, like, like this, especially the right hand, people who are right-handed. Again, in uh, if we look at COVID, so during COVID transmission, like it's, it's an uh, aerosol transmission, but then, uh, the uh, virus is also known to get deposited on the surfaces and that can get deposited in our hands, especially under nails. So nails become very, very important where transmission of diseases is concerned. Not only that, even where we uh, examine nails to look for certain conditions. So like I said, nails are one of the most important Part of our body and yes, grooming, it is important that our nails be groomed properly, they be clean and like uh, Dr. Balani said, even people who go to parlors to get their manicure done, uh, there is uh, an incidence of hepatitis B uh, contamination because of uh, pedicure and manicure, which is again, uh, basically that is for the nails that we go for manicure and pedicure, but uh, one may end up getting infections. Uh, so nails as such are very important. I think in our culture that importance has been stressed a lot right from the childhood. But uh, it is high time that the world, world also started learning something from the Indian values and cleanliness. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, uh, uh, Dr. Sarma, for bringing out uh, you know some very important high, you know uh, aspects of nail hygiene and overall hand hygiene. Uh, you talked about, uh, you know, the, the childhood when we uh, were being inspected regularly in our yeah. schools about, you know, the, the size of our nails and, uh, uh, you know, so when it comes to children, now I would go to Dr. Uh, Manan on it. Uh, hand hygiene uh, has been, you know, attributed to, uh, you know, the, the, the gravity of child uh, 
health across the world and also has been largely you know associated with the high uh, child mortality rate also and especially under 5 and uh, as i said in the beginning itself that almost 50% of can it can be you know reduced caused especially by pneumonia or diarrhea uh, dr manan uh, you know you take care of children and uh, uh, you know how do you uh, educate children as well as the parents who come to you to maintain a, a good uh, you know hand hygiene and the nail hygiene and also you know uh, what are the issues uh, we can see actually in our child health uh, you know if this is not maintained and uh, you know not only uh, you know in the areas where uh, hygiene is a you know predominant issue but also in you know for people like you know us who lives in metros uh, but is still you know somehow uh, ignore uh, in certain cases that how we need to maintain our hand and nail hygiene thank you thank you very much am i audible yes yes very much sir yeah thank you so a very common scenario you know we get a child with gastroenteritis who is admitted to the hospital has come with dehydration and uh, the mother and the father says but we haven't given the child anything from outside he only takes home food and you look at the child you know he is repeatedly putting his fingers into his mouth so typically happens in toddlers and small children they have that habit of putting fingers into their own mouth and it is common and it's okay to you know it's acceptable you know that's where the source of inf- uh, infection is so it is food water or dirty hands so a child will touch on the floor on the slipper and then the same hand will go into the mouth it's so common so that's the source of infection that is what we have to you know tell our parents that this is the source of infection you give a toy to the child uh, say two and half year old child he'll immediately pick it up and put it in his mouth infection is gone inside this is what has to be taught a lot has already been talked about by uh, our esteemed panelists on you know and you have also spoken how many infections how many microorganisms can be there on the nail bed we all know that the idea that nails should be clipped and cleaned has also been spoken about i want to talk on two or three things one is we teach our children to keep their hands clean one thing which i have been stressing in covid times and i would also like to you know convey this to our audience and to all those who are watching this show i discourage parents from sanitizing their children's hands sanitizer contains lot of chemicals it contains alcohol you sanitize that hand the child will put the hand into his mouth again he is not supposed to eat it so we generally advise children to wash their hands with soap and water that is a healthier practice i was interacting with a school about a week 10 days back and a question was asked by the parents should we ask our children to wash their hands again and again at home you know so ghar mein bhi covid ho sakta hai kya my answer was yes not because the child will get covid at home but because that way you will inculcate a good habit into the child of washing his hands just one simple thing if we teach our children before your hand touches your face you should wash it with soap and water if this simple thing is followed by the parents they should lead by example and by the children you know not only covid a lot of um, uh, infections can be prevented and a lot of mortality and morbidity can be taken care of completely agree with the dermatologist colleague who said yes we also advise nails should be clipped they should be clipped in a proper manner nail clippers of the size of the child's finger that should be taken care of it should be clipped in the proper shape otherwise uh, they, they'll end up in getting infected uh, and uh, infections like paronychia become very painful if the nail gets embedded into the skin and then it can get you know uh, uh, pus discharge and pain and then that can also further cause infection so that care has to be taken that it should be clipped in the right manner and in the right amount and regularly and every time you the nails are clipped the hand should be washed the nail cutter should also be washed with soap and water uh, a little older child you know thumb sucking is also very common you know that is also a source of infection nail biting is also a source of infection so we need to look into those causes as well you know why the child is doing that particular thing it's not always physical a lot of times you know it is a psychological issue there may be anxiety there may be stress so those aspects also need to be dealt so it's a whole you know it's physical as well as mental everything has to be looked into parenting the method of parenting plays a major role there is one way in which a parent you know just gives an order to his child don't do it 
and another way you know which we called is authoritative parenting wherein you explain to the child why you should not do it how it can cause an infection trust me even a small child as young as 2 and 1/2 years old if you explain it to him he will understand what you are saying and lead by example by you doing every time you wash your hands tell the child look i washed my hands now you also wash so that that way the good practices are inculcated in the child thank you so much uh, dr major manan uh, i think very important uh, points you have highlighted and i would like to you know i think uh, uh, understand little bit more on those uh, in the next round but before that i you know would go to uh, you know mr pandya on it and you all highlighted you know that uh, uh, the nail cutters should be of uh, you know a specific size uh, there are nail cutters for the children which are coming you know especially for infants and children and uh, uh you know uh, mr pandya was also talking about that uh, his company makes around 40 types of nail cutter and that sounds you know all you know a uh, uh, very very unbelievable for me because i i know only one kind of uh, nail cutter uh, and uh, so so mr pandya what, what are these nail cutters and what are the specialty and why do we need 40 types of uh, nail cutters <coughs> see when a newly born child uh, is there uh, we need uh, small scissors because their nails are very sharp i'm sure all the doctors would agree with me they can scratch their face and can bleed off so starts from that early time till 70 80 90 years old we have developed nail clippers which has got led light and magnifying glass where senior people who cannot see it properly still they won't injure themselves and still they can cut their nails believe me i mean for me uh all these doctors uh, learned doctors uh, explained and agreed and uh, of course we used to wash our hands before cutting the nails and after cutting the nails why were we doing this because before cutting the nails if we wash our hands then the nails will get little softer and easy to cut and after that we cut our nails and then again we wash our hands so all the germs and the unwanted foreign articles are there in the finger will be washed out now these are the fundamental things uh, which are which is uh, happening so uh, uh, i am trying to play here a role of uh, not uh, a businessman but of uh, educationalist awareness you need to know what e- we all know but we don't do it that's the problem we have as i mentioned 60 types of nail clippers will you believe me i mean japan uh, the beauty of japan is they go into details they have this uh, this kind of mind where they go uh, deep into a subject so when i saw 60 types of nail clippers i was uh, totally surprised and astonished the way uh, you were so why on the earth do we need 60 types of nail clippers but there are nails which are nail clippers which can be good for inward nails which are go- gone into the skin doctors will tell more about it but uh, of course uh two nail for the feet uh, fingers nail uh, are harder difficult to cut so we have slanted uh, cutter and straight cutter and 
curved cutter. All these things are very, very important uh, because uh, nails' uh, nature differ from person to person. So this is something which I wanted to uh, emphasize uh, that uh, whether you buy a nail clipper of a, a high nail clipper or any other nail clipper, please keep your nail intact and checked because that will take you as the doctor, one of the panelists doctor told that we used to see the nails and we can say that uh, if it is pale, then we will, uh, we will uh, uh, find out that this kind of disease this child might have or this uh, patient might have. So the same thing is this, that nakhun me bimari nahona is the most important thing. It's a barometer. So this is the fundamental thing which we need to understand. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rajesh. And uh, yeah, definitely. But now I'm I'm getting a little bit more, you know, aware about it that we may be requiring so many kind of uh, nail clippers. And uh, you know, as you highlighted that uh, the clippers are even available, which can magnify uh, the size of your nail. And you know, you may have a light, and which may be very useful for people uh, with a you know kind of. Uh, uh, impaired or lesser, you know, eyesight or at the, you know, advanced days. Uh, I'll go to Dr. Uh, Shilpa again. Uh, and we are, you know, almost 40 minutes in our discussion. And, you know, it's wonderful to hear so much of, uh, you know, uh, important aspect of something so uh, common and definitely is going to help our viewers also to practice and follow better uh, health, you know, nail and uh, hand hygiene. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Silpa, you are a surgeon. And I saw that, you know, even before uh, uh, patients are taken into a surgery room, you know, uh, when they prepare the patient, they, you know, clip the nails and then, you know, clean it. Uh, you mentioned about that even doctors do their, uh, you know, uh, nail cleaning uh, before they go for surgery. Uh, why, uh, you know, uh, you know, patient's nail are clean before the surgery and how it is connected and uh, uh, especially, you know, I oh, saw that you before you take it for the, uh, the delivery of, uh, you know, the child uh, for pregnant women, that is the ritual has been followed. Could you bring, you know, put in a little bit more oh, light on how it is a medium to prevent uh, certain infections? Yeah, Mr. Kamal, so not only doctors, the patients oh, also need to have their nails clipped when they are admitted to the hospital and are being taken for any delivery or any surgery. This is because as we have discussed, all the ex uh, expert panelists have discussed that we have a lot of germs inside the nail bed and this can be transmitted not only to others, but to the patient herself. If she continuously touches her face or she touches it anywhere else, for example, to clean herself, if she's a breastfeeding mother, what if she touches her breasts uh, with it? I mean, the infection is going to spread. And if she's going to hold a baby immediately after her delivery, then her nails and hands better be clean. So thereby, uh, not only we clip the nails, we also remove the nail polish again. Because A, we want to see the color of the nail bed. Is it blue? Is, it, is she becoming cyanosed? Plus, if we put a pulse oximeter, they say nail polish may also hinder the reading of the pulse oximeter. So not only clipping, removing of the nail polish is also important. And we also recommend the patient during pregnancy and during delivery, you know. So it's a pregnancy and delivery are a happy occasion. It's not an illness. So people want to dress up and have those photo shoots and baby showers and, you know, uh, it, share it on Facebook and everything. So it's not only a surgery, if, if it's a cesarean or not only a medical condition, it's a family affair. So they want to be all groomed and all. And sometimes they ask us, ma'am, can we use artificial nails, for example? Again, we tell them artificial nails are a no-no because not only they harbor infection, they can also, a lot of chemicals are used when you put these artificial nails. Um, so you should not use any artificial nails. You should clip them. You should not use too much of nail polish it should be used only occasionally and at the time of surgery we even remove that nail polish so because she's going to touch her uh, whole areas and the baby little baby whose skin is so soft and delicate she does and again if she's uh, feeding the baby her own breast would be touched if she's by chance using a paladay or a spoon 
or rarely bottles are not advised but again this in infection is going to spread everywhere on the baby products as well so it's important that she keeps her nails trimmed when she is hospitalized and immediately after delivery as well thank you so much uh, uh, dr silpa so so now i know that why this ritual is followed uh, and and why this ritual need to be followed not only before you go for delivery or a surgery or any other medical uh, uh, i think uh, procedure but it need to be done on day to day basis also at your home uh, uh, dr balani uh, uh, dr silpa talked about you know scratching you know the body can also lead to those those infection or sometimes you see even mentioned that uh, while uh, breast feeding uh, and touching breast and maybe that can lead to some kind of infection which can pass on to children uh, scratching itself is a i think big problem when it comes to uh, a dermatological uh, you know expertise and i'm sure you must be getting so many patients who uh, come with lot of those uh, uh, you know skin related problems which are majorly sometimes caused by you know over scratching and uh, you know unconscious scratching or subconscious scratching with the you know the large nails uh, and especially for women uh, uh, when you have larger nails or you use uh, uh, you know those cosmetic nails on that uh, what what is your opinion on that that you know what kind of uh, uh, patient flow or the complaint you get and you know how do you uh, you know kind of what kind of recommendation you will give them that how it can be avoided so uh, as you rightly said we do get a lot of patients who have these uh, small allergies or sometimes is just a, sometimes an uh, insect bite or something because of the scratching that gets aggravated so if they have long nails it also gets infected apart from we getting added even if they trim their nails we do advise them to trim their nails and sometimes they are scratching it a lot it might actually result in a very uh, like increasing the allergy aggravating it to certain extent so sometimes we really have to tell them to tie their hands and not to touch the area because uh, the more you touch the more you spread it the more you scratch the more it, there is a cycle it scratch cycle being getting activated in which you get pleasure drive pleasure out of scratching it and then it again uh, leads to more uh, increase in the number of lesions and it's not only the skin sometimes it might get infected and then uh, you get those uh, kind of sometimes boils or a swell, swollen area all around it so that is a big problem with the nail thank thank you so much uh, uh, dr bella uh, so you know i would talk to you on you know across life span of people because of the, your expertise uh, as mr pandya was also talking about you know that uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, you know biting nails and uh, this kind of practice many times we see in adults also it is yeah. not always yeah. that it is you know the children uh, who uh, indulge into this kind of thing yeah. uh, sometime it become a you know the convenience that if you find your nails uh, bothering you a little bit and you 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 know get into that uh, and i'm sure you must be getting some kind of uh, people or patients who might have complained about it uh, what is uh, your also uh, opinion uh, on this area as well as uh, you know the kind of uh, one thing which uh, mr pandya talked about that for elderly is there is a different kind of aspect so i'm sure there will be uh, a different kind of uh, health problems which can be faced at that time uh, you know keeping uh, nail hygiene may be uh, even more important for them so uh, you know i would like you to uh, you know give us a little bit more light on that that uh, how to maintain uh, you know a good uh, nail hygiene at all ages and uh, you know what are the better outcome of it yeah uh, thank you mr kamal uh, i will not uh, talk about children because that is uh, dr manan's uh, speciality uh, but uh, from 18 years onwards uh, like you said nail biting nail biting actually is most of the times a, a result of some kind of Uh, some stress some people do it when they are stressed out uh, most of the times it is a uh, stress relieving uh, uh, habit uh, and of course uh, it is a bad habit it not only it looks bad it is uh, uh, 
we, one can ingest some kind of infections also one can actually end up biting the uh, not only the nails but the fingertips also and that can lead to a number of infections like uh, dr balani has already pointed out that uh, infection from the hands and nails can actually get inside the body uh, giving rise to what we call septicemia uh, plus uh, there are certain you know important structures in our hand if the fingers get infected sometimes the whole hand can get infected or even the arm so it is uh, again nail biting is something which uh, we need to deal with very seriously especially in adults if there is some kind of stress in person's life then uh, that person needs to deal with the stress whichever way uh, everyone has their own ways of dealing with it whether it is meditation or medication or changing a lifestyle or whatever so nail biting is an absolute no no uh, secondly said about different ages uh, i'll talk about the elderly first uh, because geriatric medicine medicine is kind of my uh, my passion i should say so elderly people a uh, number of uh, issues are different uh, as compared to uh, what we, uh, i should say younger or middle aged uh, patients one uh, their skins become very uh, their skin is very friable which means uh, the skin can break very easily uh, second is the nails also become slightly brittle and at times can break off easily Uh, thirdly even their uh, capillaries or the small blood vessels they also become fragile so what happens is an elderly person uh, the nail uh, they may not have bitten or cut the nail but it can just break off and that edge becomes sharp and that person scratches a little bit that scratch can actually become quite big because the skin is also soft skin is also delicate skin is also dry and the blood vessels as it is are fragile so elderly nails are very very important secondly uh, people who are diabetics again nail hygiene becomes very important in fact we have a whole chapter of uh, diabetic foot care usme bhi i would like to talk about the nails specifically because nails like i said they are an extension our skin is uh, is an organ and uh, nails are an extension of the skin so diabetics may fungal infection of the of the nails become so very important and unfortunately since nails do not have any blood vessels any medicine that we give takes a very long time to reach the nails so any antifungal we need to give for at least 6 to 12 weeks for nail infection it may appear to be a very small spot you know there's a blackish spot on the nail but it can actually become very serious because from the nails from the hands from the toes that infection can actually travel inside the body and cause uh, what we call fungal uh, septicemia uh, in elderly like i said uh, even clipping nails becomes uh, it becomes a challenge why because like i said nails are very brittle uh, you cut in one direction and then whole nail splits so uh, i am very happy that uh, mr pandya's company is making specific nail cutters for elderly i was not aware of that so uh, it is it becomes it becomes very difficult uh, mainly because at times they are not able to see their own nails especially toe nails and at times they are not able to clip them properly uh, in between i think uh, dr balani and dr ghosh has uh, have already covered what all needs to be done for the nail health and uh, dr manan will tell us what to do about the children thank you sorry thank you so much dr bela uh, a very useful information for i think the elderly people also and i believe you know uh, they are uh, uh, you know the susceptibility to uh, or susceptibility for infections are higher so i think they need to be more careful about anything which can trigger any kind of infection uh, dr manan you talked about uh, sanitizers and that is something you know too much of uh, i think uh, sometime it may, may might be uh, you know getting overused in families uh, yes. for example my own child you know keep uh, taking sanitizer maybe 10 times in a day or 15 times in a day and when we actually propose them or we ask actually them to go and uh, wash your hand before eating you know they give a you know uh, the the counter uh, option of that can be sanitize it 
rather than going and 20 seconds washing hand so so i would like you to you know because it will be very useful for our viewers also that what are the you know the harms of over uses of sanitizer and when you should not uh, you know kind of uh, uh, trade off between uh, hand washing and sanitizers such an important question you have asked such an important question you know many a times i go to certain schools to address the parents teachers and sometimes the children as well so often i have seen in different times a child will be carrying a small bottle of sanitizer it sanitizes hands and eat food it is something which cannot be done remember sanitizer contains a lot of chemicals apart from alcohol it is not a consumable item sanitizers initially were supposed to be used only by healthcare workers and the method of using is also very important. Uh, if you ask anybody walking on the road, sanitizer use karke dikhao, he'll put three drops of sanitizer in his hands, just rub it and he says it's done. That's not how, not how you use it. You should put adequate amount of sanitizer in your hands, rub it in such a way that it covers both the dorsum and the ventral aspect of the hand and keep rubbing it till you dry it. After you dry it, only then you can say, okay, my hands are now germ-free. It's okay for adults. It's okay if you are, you know, uh, sensible enough to know, you know, what it is to be used for and not to be used for. For a child, I always say, wash your hands with soap and water because invariably their hands will go into their mouth. That is more dangerous. Number one, from the point of view of consuming what is there in the sanitizer. Secondly, excessive use of sanitizers can also cause sometimes allergy and irritation in the palms. So that can also be, uh, you know, harmful. Washing with soap and water is actually more useful than using a sanitizer, even if you consider how do I make my hands germ-free. Soap and water is more useful. 20 seconds of hand washing with soap and water is better than sanitizing. You may use a sanitizer when you are in a hurry, when your hands are not soiled, when you are outside, you have bought something, you are sat back in your car, you want to sanitize it because in case you want to scratch your nose, at least you have sanitized your hands. That's okay. But children they should always, always, always wash their hands before eating food. And as much as possible for younger children, encourage them to wash their hands with soap and water. Do not entertain or encourage sanitizer. It is there on the TV in COVID times, but tell them it's, it's, it's for the healthcare workers. For other people, adults, for us also, you know, we try to wash our hands more often, even in the hospital. I sanitize in between patients. When I come back to my room, I'll always ensure that I wash it with soap and water. I'm sure other panelists the surgeons and everybody, they will agree with me. The surgeon will also wash their hands, I think, for a very long time with soap, water, bitter in everything, dry, and then use a sanitizer and then wear gloves. So hand washing with soap and water is not something you can do away with. Sanitizer is no alternative to that. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Manan. I'm sure that the viewers who are watching will get this message. And also, uh, when you are using sanitizer, use in a quantity which actually helps you. Uh, yes. These days during the COVID-19 time when you are walking out and going even for a grocery shop or anything, you know, people put two drop of sanitizer on your hand and, and you know, you expect that you are jump free and they expect you are jump free. That may not be the, the right way of doing it. Uh, Dr. Manan, a small question we have got. Uh, most of the questions, we got so many questions actually uh, during the Facebook, uh, you know, uh, live promotion and also on the from the live audience i have covered most of them but one has come up that again you know that how to stop children from nail biting so is there any you know specific tip to do that this is a very very important question you know this is something which i tell to most of my patients whenever you have a disease you treat the cause of the disease not the symptoms so the child is biting his nails we need to know why the child is doing that you know it could be anxiety it could be stress it could be boredom it could be inattention leading into a habit. It could have turned into a tick. Apart from that, certain psychological and psychiatric problems like you know ADHD, even aneurysis, even uh, uh, mental retardation and uh, conduct disorders, tick disorders, all these things can you know cause nail biting. As far as children are concerned, you will be surprised to know if parents in the house, somebody is having a major depression or anxiety, or a conduct disorder, their children may resort to nail biting. So it, if you have to, you know, you can't uh, just say, okay, stop biting your nails. You can't say that to the child. You have to understand why the child is biting nails. If you understand there is an anxiety, there are other ways of addressing anxiety, which are more 
acceptable like you know give a ball to the child ask him to keep pressing the ball if he is anxious or a pen to keep rolling the pen this is something which is socially more acceptable and it is it, it won't cause infection gastroenteritis you know and other severe kinds of problems at the same time take psychological help to address the root cause of the problem unless you do that it will never happen remember if you put on gloves in a child or apply neem or something in his hand so that he doesn't bite his nails he'll start doing something else he'll start banging his head or he'll start you know twisting something else or he start thumb sucking or he'll start that anxiety will come out in some or the other way so the root cause the root cause has to be addressed always don't just treat the symptoms the cause has to be found out parents should understand that they have to look into it i think it's a lot to do with parenting so the, the next time are uh, the parents who are watching it uh, you know if you see your child biting uh, nails uh, rather than just uh, scolding him or her first start introspecting maybe you are doing something wrong not giving enough attention to the child yeah, and so right is, so right which is leading to that symptom uh, dr balani there is one question i just quickly take and we will be you know closing it then uh, you know it is about uh, you know the use of uh, nail polish Uh, Dr. Silpa talked about that. You know, they remove nail polish before the surgeries and all that. So the uh, uh, audience want to understand that how safe it is to use nail polish and how uh, frequently it can be done in a month. And uh, you know, does putting nail polish uh, adds or gives better, I think, uh, habitat for the germs. Dr. Balan, you are there. i think uh, she has dropped off so can i ask this question to dr silpa i think dr silpa can also address yeah. it see so nail polish uh, has chemicals in it it's not a natural product so it can have formaldehyde it can have toluene it can have a, there's there are two three chemicals in it which may be harmful so whenever so because i deal with pregnant women a lot and ladies a lot i always tell them uh, that when you buy a nail polish first of all use it occasionally uh, they may lead to yellowishness of nails and they are chemicals if they are chipped and you eat as uh, mr pandya has rightly said we eat with our hands so this nail polish can get into your mouth and uh, the products which are used uh, in any of the salons and parlors may not be uh, of appropriate quality so um, and it's good that due to covid 19 patients are you know managing things at home uh, because they are scared of the covid Uh, so the tools are also not shared besides the other things so they have their own tools at home and they are man- managing so the nail polish when we buy we can see if they have these bpb and formaldehyde and toluene these are things which are harmful for the unborn baby as well it can cause a lot of delayed milestones and acetone and other chemicals can cause miscarriages even so they are not yet scientifically proven but some studies do have uh, raised concern about these so nail polish should be removed it should not be chipped uh, and it should be used sparingly is what i would say thank you so much uh, sorry dr balani i had to pass that question on to uh, dr silpa would have more to offer maybe she, she would have definitely have she has addressed it well uh, would you like to add something but the question was that how safe it is to use nail polish and how frequently one can use that yeah i think dr shilpa has addressed it well and uh, <laughs> it is not very safe and uh, there are actually certain types of nail polishes also available now which do not have these formaldehyde and which are safer although they do not last that much so if somebody really wants to use it for certain occasions they could uh, look for replacement without the major chemicals in it that that's that's great so that means those who definitely want nail polish dr uh, balani is saying that there is something available for them as well uh, mr pandya let me you know come back to you and you uh, brought out lot of those you know age old wisdoms also which we have seen in our families uh you talked about that people you know there was a practice that you know you wash your hand before uh clipping your nails or uh, you know you wash after that i think that is very much practiced by most of the people and also many times uh you know people ask him uh, especially i get frowned upon when i am cutting my nails at any place in my house so my mother or wife starts saying that you know this is not the place to cut the nail and i don't know where where is the place to cut the nail so i believe that is also having some kind of uh you know some 
uh, some wisdom around it that why you should not cut your nail at any part of your home or you know why and maybe it is related to hygiene that's a question one and the other question which i want to understand that why uh, specifically we should not share the clipper as you you is you know started at the very beginning because you know with that message i may have to go to the market today itself and buy a couple of nail clippers because we use one in most of the people so so you know that a little bit more information on it yeah you better go to a shop and buy kai nail clipper today itself you know it's uh, very important uh, because uh, uh, even the doctors uh, agreed with me that uh, it can transmit uh, uh, germs bacteria uh, particularly uh, one of the panelist uh, doctor told that uh, a person who is suffering from diabetes and he has a diabetic uh, issues uh, uh, should not uh, share uh, and uh, these are the things which we know but we don't follow uh, i remember when i was a child my father used to have a toothbrush and we used to have bandar chap kala dant manjan you know and we were fascinated by uh, toothbrush because at that time it was expensive today if you see in every household the numbers of family members equal numbers of uh, uh, toothbrush you will find it has become new normal same thing can happen that uh, nail clipper to start with for us i would say one nail clipper per family but then the next level should be one nail clipper per person my nail clipper this is the knowledge enhancement and awareness and what are the things which we have done and which we are trying to do is we have distributed 1500 nail clippers to kendriya vidyalaya delhi cantonment to the children um, for them to understand the importance of a nail clipper uh, at the same time we believe that health care begins with self care we have tied up with faridabad fortis hospital for three months program where the nail clippers would be distributed to doctors and to the discharge patients also so these kind of activities we will continuously uh, carry on and i would uh, suggest or request rather uh, dr manish dr shilpa dr indu dr bella what you have shared your knowledge i am extremely thankful to you uh, because uh, it is not business it is health that's what i believe in we are selling 7.5 million nail clippers in japan can you imagine 7.5 million nail clippers we are selling in japan even today and here with uh, 10 times more population of india uh, we are way behind because we take it easy we think oh nail clipper mein kya hai our nail clippers are stainless steel it has a tray as a uh, kamal just mentioned that uh, nails are not very auspicious i mean and uh, shraddha ka ho ya shraddha ka ho paav ke niche agar nail aate hain to usko acha shagun nahi mana jata what we have done is we came up with the nail clipper which has got a tray can you see the tray it's a nail clipper with a tray where all the nail clippers will be deposited in this tray and once you are done you can throw it away into the the nails uh, pieces you can throw it into the uh, dustbin dustbin wherever 
your dustbin is so uh, these are the things jab when we are doing uh, this uh, making uh, roti particularly female who are making roti cooks who are making atta and water and uh, tail and they mix it definitely they will bring all the nail uh, dirt into the dough i'm sure because if it is not cleaned it will come because it is like a rubber the dough becomes like a like a rubber and it, it will suck it you know so it's very important for us to be very careful and we have innovated as i mentioned that japan is go into details and therefore and the best part is i'm very proud to say that this nail clipper is 100% made in india in nimrana in rajasthan we have a 30000 square meter plant uh, in a japanese economic zone in nimrana rajasthan and these nail clippers are purely made in india now this is something very proud for me to tell because uh, i believe in atmanirbhar and we are just importing the technology but all the labor and all the technology which is being taught here in india in ncr in rajasthan is done by us so this is something which i wanted to tell that uh, whatever it may come your nails are very very important and uh, uh, dr manish dr shilpa dr indu dr bela any time if you invite us for any kind of uh, participation of any program whether in your clinic or in hospital will be more than glad to come and uh, distribute nail clippers if that serve the cause of uh, uh, healthcare begins with self care and the awareness thank you I'm so really much thank you. Uh, thank, thank you so much mr rajesh for uh, such a generous offer and uh, you know highlighting uh, you know various aspects and even you know highlighting the aspect of your uh, products being made in india uh, uh, we believe that if they start being used in india as well as you said we in india you are you not using as much clippers as are uh, required uh, with this i would be closing my session today uh, and to my viewers hope you enjoyed and uh, got some really uh, useful information to uh, stay healthy and prevent diseases uh, especially at a time when we are living under the constant fear uh, of the ongoing covid-19 which uh, during which we have also learned a lot of good practices of you know personal hygiene washing our hands using masks you know going uh, out to the public only after wearing the masks and you know uh, also having the right kind of sneezing and uh, coughing etiquettes uh, i believe that Uh, a, a right kind of nail uh, hygiene also need to be uh, involved in the, this with the, the with the uh, you know most possible sincerity because uh, if, in 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 the lack or absence of this uh, you know the a lot of efforts and lot of diligence which we put uh, in maintaining our hand hygiene may go in vain because uh the germs lives in your nail and underneath them and you need to be equally careful or more careful about them uh till then uh so you know uh, we, we we wish you a, a, a wonderful uh, time ahead and we look forward to see you again with a new discussion with the new topic which helps you stay healthy uh till then uh, keep uh, you know a, a positive mindset uh eat healthy sleep well and uh, make sure that you are helping people whatever or whichever way possible to the people who may be uh, requiring your help during this time of covid-19 thank you so much all our panelists for joining us today for this wonderful session and uh, i'm sure all our audience liked a lot uh, what you all said and it is going to help in them uh, you know for them to stay healthy uh, for themselves as uh, well as for their family thank you so much thank you thank you, thank you.